Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I'm recording out at a little uh, dog park area. So I, I did a video recently. I said I do the videos where I record, where I am, and I start recording, and that's what's going on. So we got our little iPhone here. We're using an iPhone microphone that's built into the phone, and uh, everything is is good. But I'm at a little dog park here, letting the dog run around. Uh, my dog's name is Luffy. For those of you who weren't around for the puppy pictures a year ago. Uh, yes, named after the One Piece pirate. No, I'm not a big dog person. Um, you know, I take care of, I take care of my dog, but I'm watching all these owners here who like dress like their dog. They're like color coordinating with. That just seems crazy to me. But but whatever. You you know, I as a guy who uh, who's run a comic store, who am I to uh, criticize what people are into? Anyway, um, I like this place. So they got beer. So you can drink, you can let your dog free in the park and then sit and drink beer and apparently record a video, so that's what we're doing. But anyway, if you hear some noise in the background, that's what's going on. I'm not at a uh, dog fighting area, that's tomorrow. Um, anyway, I, so here's why I started recording the video here. Um, I said they have beer here, so it's a little, it's a place called Mutt's, and they've got uh, beer, and they have food and burgers and everything else. And um, they're, <laughs> they had a little, like a magazine stand set up here. It doesn't look permanent, but, uh, you know, it's, it's here. And on the magazine stand, they had uh, some comic books. Not many. They had a, a couple copies of Dogman, which seems to fit, uh, you know, it's a dog park, so Dogman fits, fits that. And then somewhat, uh, you know, <laughs> inexplicably, they had uh, Spider-Man, uh, some graphic novels there. And uh, that's cool. I, I mean, I don't know who's going to the dog park picking up Spider-Man, but uh, having a couple there, it's fine. Um, you know, I think anywhere where you can get comics, the better. Doubt it's a very high traffic area for people picking up, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. But, but who knows? Dogman seems a little on the nose. I, I think, you know, that, that does strike me as parents bring their children here with the dogs. They play with the dogs. Parents kind of beg, you know, sorry, kids beg the parents to get the comic. And that, there you have it. I see some dogs are barking over there. But, uh, while I was, uh, heading over here, I was reading this long tweet thread from a just a, I guess he has another YouTube channel much bigger than mine, um, but uh, just this obnoxious douche uh, is probably the best way to put it. Uh, always kind of with these these takes that are just just wrong, you know. Peter Parker's school shooter, that kind of nonsense. And uh, the take was uh, comics. There's no place for gatekeeping in comics, and there's this long thread about how. You know, and it's always the same. It's like men, always men, white men, trying to uh, keep people from reading comics. They're trying to gatekeep. They're trying to keep people out of the hobby. And how? How? I, I, how? I guess is my question. Is any of that even a remote possibility at this point? When they have Spider-Man graphic novels at a dog park, where is this gatekeeping exactly? Um, I, I don't. I don't get any part of where any of this makes sense um it uh look <laughs> there isn't uh, there there's no barrier anymore back in the 80s you had comic books on the newsstand you go into a grocery store there are comic books there if you wanted specialized comics you had to go into a comic store the gate was simply having to you know find one in a local area get there and, and get your comic uh, that could be difficult. That could be, you know, tricky to figure out. I wouldn't call that necessarily a gate, but just, you know, comic works weren't that accessible. Today, you, I mean, hell, you don't have to leave your bed. You can, uh, well, I mean, I guess to pick up the package when it arrives at your door from Amazon. But, I mean, it's it's everywhere. If you're willing to go down the path with piracy, you don't even have to order. It's just, you, you click to a website, and there are your comics. If you want to find a community of people like you, who like the comic books you like, you can find it. Anything. Like, there are fan sites devoted to every character. There's there's ones for Groot. There's ones for that Cosmo dog. That would have been a good book to have here if there was a Cosmo dog. Anyway, there's, there's one for everything. There's an Ace the Bat Hound site with a message board where you can go and talk about how much you like Batman's dog. Like, there, there's... You know, I, there's no shortage of places to go talk to people about. So when I see these threads of comic books, uh, there's no place in comic book for gatekeeping. But how? How and where? Really? 
If uh, if you're saying that somebody going on Twitter saying, uh, you know, just just posting the insane tweet of, you know, girls can't read comics or nobody can read this thing. I mean, it, it, if you're talking about that as gatekeeping, Twitter has a million insane things posted there every single day. There's no shortage of it. So why do we have to give credibility to somebody saying, like, girls can't read comics? Obviously, girls can read comics. Girls have access to comics everywhere. Hey, boy, how you doing? Uh, girls can, uh, that was a dog, by the way, not an injunction into the video. For all I know, I may have misgendered this dog, though. Actually, I can't, it's walking away now, I can't tell. Um, but, like, there, there's, no, there's no barrier to getting whatever comic book, whatever character you want, and talking about it with other people who presumably feel the way you do. And if you're going to take some random troll or person on Twitter who's going to say, you can't read a comic, I mean, look, you gotta, we got to teach our kids to be a little tougher than that. They, they should not uh, get somebody directing a mean tweet at them and go, oh my god, I'm being kept out of an entire hobby because somebody posted something insane on Twitter. Uh, that is all Twitter is. I mean, the bigger question is, why are you on Twitter in the first place if you're willing to be deterred from something you like so immediately? I, I, I don't get the gatekeeping comment. You can, buy, you can find comics everywhere. You can find comics at a dog park, for God's sake. You can find it everywhere you go. Best Buy had copies of manga sitting there. Uh, it used to be hard to get copies of manga in the U.S., or at least a lot harder than it is today. Uh, again, I don't still think that's a, a gatekeeping issue. I think it's like an accessibility issue, but that's not a problem anymore. You can find whatever you want very, very quickly. You can order online. You can just steal it online. You could find it. I, I mean, I, I think at this point, it's not quite as ubiquitous as coffee, but you can walk, you know, go into any town of any size and go 10 blocks in any direction, and somebody will be selling comic books. Maybe not all the ones you want. But there will be something. There will be a graphic novel somehow, somewhere, everywhere. There every so can wh when can we stop with this pearl clutching, you know, comic book gatekeeping is bad kind of nonsense? It's a, it's a nowhere statement. It doesn't mean anything. I can say, uh, you know, it is important to drink water. We should all have water. I, I, it, that that is a more legitimate, <laughs> frankly, statement because there are communities or areas that do not have clean water, that do not have healthy running water, and some infrastructure is needed. That is a bigger deal. If we want to talk about comic books being gatekept in, you know, Nigeria, sure. But in, in the U.S., just stop with that noise. It, it, is, it, it is the very nature of somebody going, hey, look at me. Look at what I'm posting. I'm posting something that means I'm a friend of yours. I'm an ally. I Like me. Please like me. I need attention. Please love everything that I do. Please. Please, I need it. I need it so bad. That's that, those people creep me out. Bluntly, I know I know virtue signaling is a way, but it's it's more pathetic than that. This is purely a, a desperate cry for attention, which is what a lot of this stuff feels like. It's people who desperately need to be loved, whether it's uh, you know men or bees or whatever the f the people are talking about. I, I don't know. I don't get it. I guess my point is this: if you uh, if, you know there there, I get a wide audience of people who watch this channel. If you're somebody who honestly has concerns that comic books have uh, strong gatekeeping elements to them and, you know, you're, you're, it really bothers you, it keeps you up at night, stop. The battle, the, the battle has been won. It's, it's over. There is, uh, there's, some, there's a place for you everywhere. No problem. Comic books uh, have room for you everywhere. And there are plenty of things to be worried about in the world. A million things. I, I, I have deep concerns about all kinds of things all the time. Gatekeeping in comic books is not one of them. Because the reality is, it, it's not a real problem. Not anymore. So, this should be good news. I think unless you are, uh, unless you're purely doing this for some kind of desperate cry for attention clout, this is a victory. This is a victory for all of us. Men, women, marginalized people, whatever it happens to be, good news. Life is better. So, you know, I'm going to finish this beer, try and figure out where my dog went, try not to step in any crap, metaphorically or, or you know, real. And thanks for listening.